Welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I would like to demonstrate a real-time example of abstract class. I have worked on this use case in my career, so I would like to show that example in this video. If you don't know what is an abstract class, then you can go back to my previous videos where I have explained the concept of abstract class and also a basic example. So this is the diagram of the process that I have worked on. So this was developed for a organization and this is the process that I have worked on. So this is the message converter process it receives the input in form of XML and CSV and it extracts some fields from these files and creates the output in JSON format. Actually, we were inserting into the database in our real-time application just to keep this example simple and creating the JSON documents and this JSON documents will be consumed by a different process that is message processor. So to demonstrate the abstract class, only this part is needed and this part is out of scope for this example. So this is an example CSV file that we will receive from other processes or the message converter here receives from other processes. So here we have different columns or different fields of data, but the message converter has to extract only these fields. It, do, it, it don't care about the inscribed ID or source name or source ID. And also here is an example XML file. It do have different fields, but the message converter process has to extract only these three fields. In real-time application, these files will have so many number of columns or so many number of child nodes over here. But just to keep this example simple, I have kept only few fields over here. I have created a console application to demonstrate this use case. So I have created project with the name message converter. Here, this process takes XML and CSV files as input and produces JSON output. So here, the common functionality is producing the JSON output and the functionality that is different here is the reading csv files and reading xml files so i have created a file processor base over here and i have declared a method which reads the file so this is the base class and in this application you may need to read xml files and also the csv files so the reading the way that we read the files is different, but the way that we generate the output files is common for both CSV and XML files. So here I have written the generate, generate JSON output method, and this is common for both the type of files. So here I am calling the read file method, and I am passing the input file over here. And at the time of writing this class, we don't know how we are reading the file, but we are just delegating the responsibility of reading file to the child classes. So it's the headache of the developer who write the child classes. And sometimes we may have to write those child classes, but as we have to follow the rules, we have created this as an object method. And we will get the file content as an insurance DTO object. So we have created this insurance DTO class over here and here we have the field that this process needs. 
So if we go to the CSV file or XML file, as we discussed before, this process is only interested in reading first name, last name, and policy number. That's it. So we have created those properties only. And this read file returns insurance PTO. And here we are converting that to a JSON string. So we are using JSON convert class. This is a NuGet package that we have to add. We can add this NuGet, NuGet package from here, manage NuGet packages. And after that, you can search mutantsoft.json over here in the browse. You will find this package, the mutantsoft.json. And if you select, it will ask you to install. I have already installed it, so it is showing uninstalled. And here we are generating the output file just to make the output files different from each other. We are appending the timestamp over here in format of DDMMYY, and this is 24 hours time format, seconds and milliseconds. And we are creating the file in the output path. So here the program that path is the base path that we have declared in the program that CS file. And we have to process the XML file. So here we have created the XML file processor and it is inherited from the file processor base. As it is inherited from the file processor base, it has to provide the implementation of reading the file. So here this method will get the file name and here we are reading the XML file using X document. And in this we are navigating to the message element like if you see here we are navigating to this message element and after that using this element using the message element we are reading the first name last name and policy number similarly we have the csp file processor this is inherited from file processor base and here also we are getting the input file as a parameter as this is inherited from file process file processor base we must have to implement the read file and this logic is different from the xml file the way that we read the file is different over here here we are reading all the lines and from that if we see our excel or the csv files as we have seen before the content is in the second line. So if we consider that as an array of lines, so this is at first index. So this is zeroth index and this is first index. And we are reading this CSV file. So let me open this with the notepad. So we can see the content in the csv format let me open this with visual studio code so this is the content so first we are reading this line and after that we are splitting it with a comma and we will we, we are interested to read only these three fields so these are at first second and third indexes so we are doing the same. We are reading the file file lines as an array. And after that, we are splitting the line. Sorry, we have to split lines of one because the content is at first index. And after that, we are reading this array. And we are getting first name, last name, and policy number. And this is the main class. And in the main class, we have created the xml file processor and we have passed the xml file name and here we have created the csv file processor and here we have passed the csv file information file path so here if you clearly see when we are writing this class this class is a partially implemented class that means 
it has a generate json output method that is common for all the child classes but it has a method that should be implemented by the child classes it is imposing a rule on child classes to implement the read file method so as we have said before when we have to implement a class partially we have to go for the abstract classes so that is what we are doing here and it is the headache of child child classes to implement the read file method so and after that here we are just using those child classes to create the json output from the php and xml files so i'm running with application so the file or the process has run successfully so if we go to the output file so we can see the json information over here so this is the first file that it is generated and this is the second file it is generated that is all about the abstract classes thank you if you like this video please subscribe and share it with your friends thank you